Oops, oops. Ah, uh, the last slot before cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> when I get to talk about money. Hi, everyone. My name is Carol Minton Morris, and I'm with the Dura Space <coughs> Organization. I also serve as the co chair for the Outreach Working Group for the National Digital Stewardship Alliance. Most of us would likely agree in this room that digital preservation and archiving is a very good idea. Paying for it, however, is a big problem for many institutions. That's why the U.S. Library of Congress is working with more than 200 government agency, educational, nonprofit, and business members of the NDSA to address this big problem. Establishing, maintaining, and advancing the capacity to preserve digital resources for the benefit of present and future generations. We've discovered along the way that additional resources are super helpful in accomplishing this task and have started looking for what we're calling hip pocket resources that mo might boost both individual projects and larger initiatives. And that's why we decided to look into crowdsource microfinancing in the form of Kickstarter. The big question, is the general pro public really interested in spending money to help preserve digital resources? And how effective might crowdsource microfinancing be? And could we as an organization fan the flames of funding? The second biggest question is, are there Kickstarter projects already out there that specifically have to do with digital preservation and archiving? Third question, could the NDSA use Kickstarter or other microfinance platforms to fund its efforts? So what are the stats? Kickstarter is two years old. Uh, as of April 2011, and the following are 2011 stats. Launch projects, 27,000 approximately. Successful projects, approximately $12,000 pledged, $99,344,382. And as of May 2011, there were 2 million Kickstarter backers. So what we've done is we've got five curators. We've decided to launch this Kickstarter um, curated uh, page. And 16 projects have met or exceeded funding goals so far. Um, there's broad selection criteria. And so what's the, what's the big payoff? Right now, Kickstarters match 1.45 million project backers with 18,000 successfully funded projects totaling more than $150 million in funding. So there's nothing micro about that. Kickstarter and microfinance plat platforms like it can serve technologists, entrepreneurs, librarians, and archivists. But what we found out is that actually we're not really getting that kind of play in these microfinance platforms. Um, as you can uh, see, they're really, if you go in and look at it, there's not that much that we can curate in terms of technology or preservation and archiving projects. And that's really why I'm talking to all of you today to inspire you to perhaps get involved. Kickstarter is heavy on content of all stripes, but light on enabling technologies and practice. Um, it's not the only uh, microfinancial uh, matchmaker on the block. And they break down loosely into entrepreneurial <coughs> kinds of platforms for the greater good, and some fall somewhere in the middle. And this is just um, a quick look at a handful of uh, the kinds of microfinancing platforms that are out there. They all have different requirements. They all have different goals. But they really have share something in common, I think, with open source, and that there's a general kind of an esprit de corps having to do with engaging crowds outside the general public in this good work. Um, got a repository project that's for the greater good that requires participation to succeed. Advert is about engaging people in financing advertising campaigns that they like. Uh, Flatterer is one that is, came about because people really wanted to be able to um, get people to send money beyond just asking for it on the web. Um, similar to Kickstarter, Indiegogo is a very popular microfinance platform. Focuses on artists and creative entrepreneurs 
Projects can close before funding is reached fully, but transaction fees are very high. Spot Us is a nonprofit stepchild of the American Public Media Group, provides a platform com for community power reporting. I'm not going to get through all of these. Um, 33 Needs is another interesting uh, platform. It's kind of hybrid, falls somewhere in the middle, and that really has to do with um, trying to uh, use entrepreneurial methods to uh, match up people with good causes. Uh, CrowdRise users support charities and volunteer organizations by voting for their projects on the site. Uh, 1.5 million charities on board. And Donors Choose uh, apparently has Oprah and Stephen Colbert on board to promote their site, uh, but it's really good and uh, tends to match up teachers with um, available resources. First Giving helps organizations with successful online fundraising campaigns and events. 8,000 organizations and 13 million online donors participating so far. Fund Change is an initiative powered by a socially innovative web application designed to make things happen. Uh, and these are the best. And I'm going to encourage you to go online and see my um, presentation online if you'd like more information. So who knew that the crowd could be inspired to participate in multiple, sometimes esoteric, philanthropic, pay-as-you-go online activities? I didn't. didn't. So how about it? I'm going to ask that maybe next year, when we all come together, there will be some microfinanced, crowdsourced uh, projects that have been funded through one of these platforms. See me if you'd like to talk about any of them. Thank you very much.